So on the 1st of April at St Charles Cripplegate, Lloyd's Choir will be doing their annual spring concert. And the main work this, this year is a very unusual commission in memory of Christine Didelot, who sang in our alto section for a number of years. And uh, she was an exceptional, extraordinary person because um, she was a businesswoman, but she sang in lots of different choirs and she was um, hugely enthusiastic about choral singing to the extent that not only should she sing in lots of choirs but she ended up um, running and being very much involved in the key members of the International Sanger Stevna which is an international choral festival that she set up with some other people. While she was organising the last of these she suddenly discovered that she was terminally ill and she was only 49 and with a very aggressive cancer and on Realising this, she decided that she wanted to commission a piece from me. We had a very intense conversation about the kind of piece she wanted, and um, I said to her, well, actually, I don't have any ideas for a piece. I said, have you any idea what you want? She said, no, you'll just find the right subject. Up until June this year, I was still struggling for a subject. I still hadn't found a text. Ian Brendel, Ian Brendel, who's um, a wonderful member of this choir and a fantastic composer himself, he said to me after that, he said, why don't you do creation? And I thought at the time, why would I do creation? For all kinds of reasons. I mean, why would a 21st century composer do this, this biblical myth? Very few people actually believe that that's literally true. Why would you do it? What does it have to say? And then I thought about the previous pieces I'd done. So the, and I got very interested in binary storytelling. So you have a piece like the um, Passion Fragments, where it tells the story of St. Peter's denial of Jesus, but at the same time it's interspersed with modern texts from Martin Luther King and so on. So I thought, what would I do if I was doing creation? And it, it became immediately obvious that the texts, the biblical texts about how God created the earth in six days, needed to be interspersed with texts by 20th, 21st century composers about how we, men, people, humanity is destroying the planet. So the choir sings the um, biblical text of creation. You have to decide what, what soloist you're going to have. And I decided it was just going to be one alto because that would commemorate Christine. And the alto um, sings poems by um, a poet called Franta Bass, who was, um, uh, I think it was Czech, and he died in Terezin when he was 14. Um, so he was like Anne Frank murdered by the Nazis, and he died in 1944, and he left behind just a very small number of very simple poems. And three poems I've used. I've used the first and the last verse of a poem called The Rose, and a poem um, by him called The Garden, so it's slightly bigger, and a third poem called The World. So those poems are interspersed with the biblical text. Um, and in the first of them, after the first day, the alto sings about how the rose is so beautiful, how it smells, how it looks, and in the second, um, after the second day, she sings about the last verse from Franta Bass's poem about how the rose has withered. And then she sings about the garden uh, after the third day, and it's a beautiful garden, there's a little boy. And then after the fourth day, it's the last verse of the garden where she sings about the little boy's gone away, he's not there anymore, he's no more. And the last verse, after the fifth day, there's the world, and it's all about how the world's turning. And what happens in, in that fifth day is then there's a sort of orchestral interlude. So in this interlude, the orchestra plays two notes alternating in the same rhythm all the way around, all the way through, to suggest the earth moving around as it rotates around the sun, and it gradually moves up through the orchestra, and at the climax it's very prominent. And then you sort of get the feeling, I think, at that point. The title is misleading. It's not so much about the creation, it's about our destruction or potential destruction. And so I thought I have a children's choir and after each day the children's choir sings an adaptation of words from Louis MacNeese's poem Prayer Before Birth. They're singing as children who are yet to be born praying that they will live in a world which has trees, that has water, there they won't get shut up by a dictator, um, that they'll be able to be free. In the sixth day the alto sings the creation text and the choir sing Kyrie lays on against it, it builds up to a climax. And then we jump to immediately to the from the first book of the Bible, Genesis, all the description of the creation, to um, John's vision of some kind of apocalypse where he describes four angels at the four corners of the earth. And then there follows some texts by Jeremiah and Isaiah, which show what couldn't happen unless if we less unless we change our ways. Now I mentioned the word unless, 
which is very important because all the way through this there's the word unless appearing because it's, it's not a foregone conclusion. And unless, the word, setting the word unless again and again um, will have a resonance for, for most people um, of a certain age and younger, anyone who's read Dr. Zeus, because anyone who's read the Lorax, the word unless, it's right at the end of the Lorax, unless unless we, we change. So we do have that option. And I realised you can't have a work like this ending in total devastation. We have to have hope. And so the piece ends on a note of hope, saying that unless we cherish our beautiful world for our children to enjoy, for we are the gardeners of this world, and we must see that it is good. And all the way through, because, and God saw that it is good, punctuates each day. And God saw that it is good, and the evening, the morning, and the first day, and the, each creation, each aspect, and God saw this is good. Now, as we get to the word man, there's a climax in day six on the word man, um, and this is followed by the words, and God saw that it was, but each time it's interrupted by the orchestra. So the words that end the, very, the piece, which are the alto, has the last word for Christine, and I think, I hope, that will have an extra point, it just being one solo alto, and then she sings, for we are the gardeners of this world, and we must see that it is good. So the ending is not really, and that seems very much to chime in with what Christine felt, and also, of course, with what I feel, that, um, and it doesn't matter whatever your spiritual or religious belief, that, that it is up to us, it is now up to us. Um, all the details are on the Lloyd's Choir website, and we're also doing, um, the other works in the programme are Serenade to Music by Vaughan Williams, Elgar Give Unto the Lord, and um, the Wasps Overture with the orchestra, and that will be with the Cohen Ensemble. The fabulous Finchley Children's Muse Group will be the Children's Choir, and we've got the wonderful May Haydon singing the alto solo. So very exciting programme, and very much hoping you'll be able to join us.